Dr. Kristen Marver is an enthusiastic coral biologist focusing her research on increasing the survival of the Caribbean coral reefs. She was born in Wichita, Kansas in 1982, but currently resides in Willemstad's Carrasso. Her interest in the sciences didn't start until her teenage years. She was introduced to the ocean at the age of 13 and later scuba dived and saw coral for the first time. She received her undergraduate from Georgia Institute of Technology in Atlanta, Georgia, also known as Georgia Tech, and she obtained a Bachelor's of Science in Applied Biology. She went on to get her PhD in Marine Biology at the University of California, San Diego in their Institution of Oceanography. From there, she continued her postdoctoral research studying ecology, reproduction, and juvenile behavior of Caribbean coral reefs, specifically at Caribbean Research and Management of Biodiversity, also known as CARMABI. This is a research station where she currently continues her research. Outside of the lab, Marver has many different hobbies. She enjoys photography, painting, dancing, tropical gardening, and scuba diving. Although she is constantly scuba diving for her research, for her research that is her favorite part about her job. I chose Dr. Marver because of her hard work and dedication. I admire her passion, which is shown throughout her presence on social media, through TED Talks, and interviews. I identify with her because of that. Not only is she a very successful woman in science, but she is relevant and up-to-date with technology and the changing world. I strive to become a scientist who is successful and personable to the people around me. Marver does a thorough job of this by participating in TED Talks, interviews, and writing articles that vary in audiences. Marver focuses her research on the conservation, restoration, and reproduction of the Caribbean coral reef of Carrasso. She also researches spawning and larva activity along with the ecology surrounding the reef and attempt to help save and rebuild it. Throughout her research, she has been in over 20 countries and has spent over 1,000 hours underwater. Marhover's most recent article, Coral Spawning Unsynchronized, expressed the dangers of unsynchronized spawning and the effects that may follow if the trend continues. The article explained that in order for coral reefs to reproduce, their spawning has to be synchronized. Without that synchronicity, the coral reefs cannot reproduce and therefore are limited. This coordination of spawning may be breaking down and there is the result of coral reefs shrinking. Spawning time is based on environmental signals so that the coral knows when to release their eggs and sperm. Slight variations in the environment can affect the reproduction window. A difference in the time of spawning leads to reduced fertility. The further apart the time, the less likely fertilization occurs. This specific research was looking at the spawning patterns to determine what signals the coral to release their eggs and sperm and to determine if that is similar globally to other coral reefs or just specific to the location. In this specific experiment, they focused on the Red Sea. They quantified the coral spawning during the four reproductive seasons and compared their collected data to historical data of coral spawning. They realized that coral reefs in the Red Sea lack synchronicity. These images were pulled straight from her article and they explained in a more concise way how coral spawning is affected. This image is a summary of data that was collected and talked about throughout her article. It shows the synchronicity based on year, lunar day, and the duration of types of coral. Over the years, it is evident that the reefs lack a synchronized spawning period. Thus far, Maharver has had plenty of success. She successfully decoded the spawning times of various corals in order to increase reproduction. She performed the first breeding of Caribbean pineapple coral, which is also known as elliptical star coral, which is shown on the picture on the bottom right, along with the breeding of the Caribbean pillar coral, which is the picture on the top. She came up with a successful rearing method of coral. This is the process of taking the coral larva, growing, growing it, and raising it until it's mature so that she can then go back and replace it into the ocean. As a part of that method, she observed larva activity in their development. Another part of her success is being able to share her passion and knowledge with other scientists and people. She has done numerous TED Talks and interviews to express her research and accomplishments. Due to her success and passion within her field, she will continue with her research. As a large next step, she will be looking into which materials are best suited for coral settlement. In order to do that, she is looking into collaborating with material scientists. She will continue her research on coral behavior, specifically of the coral reef of Carrasso. This will require numerous diving nights, especially after the full moon. 
Overall, she has a dream of expanding the knowledge of coral so that it is as well developed and understood as cell biology.